Hi guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked, and today I'm coming at you with a walkthrough of the Magic Lantern 2.3 version. For the Canon T2i, we're going to go over the first couple menus, and uh, it's probably going to be about a three-part video. Uh, any of you guys that have a Canon T3i, there'll be a link up above uh, right now coming up on the screen for the beginning part one of the walkthrough of the Canon T3i. So I'll have uh, two separate videos for the T2i and T3i. So let's dive right into it. Um, so first thing you're gonna do, if you ever want to turn Magic Lantern off on your camera, say you're shooting and you don't wanna have Magic Lantern on, you can actually turn it off while it's still on your SD card. So what you do is you hit on, and while you hit on, you hold set. And when you hold set, if you notice, up here in this far left corner, it says Magic Off. So Magic Lantern has been turned off on your camera and your camera will function the way it would without Magic Lantern. Now if you want to turn it back on, let's turn our camera off here. Let's turn our camera back on. So the camera's back on. So uh, one of the really cool things that Magic Lantern added in 2.3 is, uh, <coughs> is being able to <coughs> do a, <coughs> a shortcut. So we're going to hit we're going to hit AV right here. Now if you notice, and I don't know if you guys can see it too well, but there's these little things are popping up. So the first time you hit AV, it's going to give you the option to change your ISO. So if I wanted to go in and I can use these bars right here, as you can see my ISO is changing. Now it's that that's at 100 and I'm just bringing it up. If you notice the number is changing right here at the bottom. So we'll drop it back down to 100. And then the second one is your Calvin temperature. Now this is your Calvin temperature right here on the screen, and you're able to go in and change the pretty much the temperature if you want to make it hot or cold. If you actually want to, set, if you want it to be automatic, just hit the set button, and then Magic Lantern is going to do its best to try to make it an automatic, uh, give you the best automatic white balance setting. So we'll hit AV a third time. Actually, once you've done the automatic, you've got to start all over again. So once you've hit the automatic button, you got to hit AV all over again. So Calvin temperature. Um, okay, and then this one, this one has to do with your shutter and aperture. So your AV, you can change your, your f-stop here. If you guys notice, my f-stop is changing right here in the bottom left-hand corner as I'm making it darker and brighter. And then your shutter which I can get on the Canon T4i, or Canon T, T2i, you can get the shutter all the way down to 24, and I'm gonna show you how you override that with Magic Lantern. So, and then you hit AV again, and it's back to, your shortcuts are off. So you have three different functions that you have by hitting AV with the Canon T2i. Um, the T3i doesn't have the same functions, it has similar functions. So the shortcut feature is really nice. Again, all you gotta do is hit AV. All right, so let's jump right into the Magic Lantern settings. So we're gonna go over the audio settings. They're very simple, uh, pretty self-explanatory. I figure most people out there probably already know how to use them, but we're gonna run through them real quick. Uh, your analog gain, that has to do with when you've got a mic hooked up, that has to do with, uh, I don't know how to get into it in too in depth, but it has to do with the, the loudness of your, of your mic. Um, I like to keep mine at 29, I find Anything over 29, it distorts it. Anything under 29, it's a little too quiet. Uh, your left and right digital gain, it's, it's like a fake added, uh, it, mainly what that is, if it's, if it's a really, really loud environment and you're trying to, to, capture, to capture somebody very specific, um, you can bring up the, the digital gain, but it, it sounds really, really bad. So I never, I always keep my digital gain at zero. Um, so, I would not use the digital gain because you're going to get a lot of distortion and the sound quality is just going to be crap. Uh, your input source. So right now I've got it set to external. So um, if I wanted to switch it over to internal mic, as you notice the bottom down here, it's hearing what I'm saying right now. Um, so you can switch between what type of device you want or you could switch between left and right, one internal, one external if you want to do that or just external. Uh, mic power, I'm always going to leave that on on, but I'm going to leave it on a low. That's another thing. You want to turn it too high, you're going to get a little bit of distortion. Um, really, the only thing you should be messing, messing with is your, is, your analog, is your analog gain. 
AGC gain is off. And again, if you turn that on, you're gonna get a little bit of that hissy sound. So you turn that off and that kind of, that really cuts it down. Uh, output volume, so if you've got headphones connected to your camera, um, this, is a, this is a way for you to actually figure out the output volume so you can hear what's being said with the headphones. Um, so I've got it set to zero, so if I had headphones on right now, I wouldn't really be able to hear anything. If I turned it up, then I'd be able to start hearing stuff through the headphones, depending on how loud I need it to be for the shoot. Uh, headphone monitoring, I've got it turned off right now, and then audio, audio meters. I've got them turned on. As you can see, your uh, audio meters, I'll go back to internal here. Oh, there she is. And if you can see, you've got your audio meters down here. Uh, now, if you ever do have a question about something, say, uh, what does digital gain do? I don't know. Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the display button, and the display button is actually going to give you a rundown of what that function does, which is really nice. Uh, as well, I don't believe you can do this with any of these functions. Uh, when you're going through these, certain functions have sub-menus in them. So if I hit Q, as you can see, you see how it's going uh, dark and light like that? That means that there's no sub-menu to it. Um, we're going to go on and jump over from audio over to exposure. Um, as you can see, white balance, I have a bunch of sub-menus in there. So I can go through and set up my settings uh, according to my sub-menus, and I hit Q again, and that's gonna take me out of them. Uh, as well, once I've hit white balance, I can use the wheel up at the top. So your, your wheel right at the top, you hit set, you can go into it and you can go in and you can actually use the wheel to control it. Or you can use your, your function, your arrow keys, going left and right here. Uh, as well, when you're like this, you're able to go through them so you can actually see what you're doing with your aperture and shutter uh, right there with Magic Lantern. And then when you're done, just hit set again. It's going to take you back out. Um, so your white balance, ISO, shutter, aperture, most of you guys should know how to use those. Again, you do have like this, like this aperture. It doesn't have a submenu. So that's what it does when it doesn't have a submenu. But if you're interested in seeing if something has a submenu, just hit the Q button. And then the Q button, if there's a submenu, will take you into the submenu and you can tweak your settings even more. Uh, your picture style. I use CineStyle, so anybody that wants to know, CineStyle does work with Magic Lantern. So it actually works right in Magic Lantern. So I've got my CineStyles turned on, which is great. Uh, uh, CineStyles is an amazing piece of, of uh of color correction in a manner of speaking, it flattens everything so that when you're in post and you're doing your editing, it makes it easier to color correct stuff. Next is one of my favorite settings, which is the exposure override. Now I've got it turned on right now, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on and turn it off. We're gonna pop outside of Magic Lantern. Now as you can see, the lowest my shutter will go is a 31 right now. Um, that's the lowest your shutter goes on the Canon T2i. Well, with the override, go on and turn it on. We'll go up to AV, we'll hit it twice. Or three times, I should say. And let's drop our shutter down. Well, it automatically does it for me once I've got the override turned on. But look, you can drop your shutter down all the way down to 24. Um, I can bring it back up to 31 here. But with the override, it gives you a few more stops brighter so it allows you in a lower lighting situation it allows you to get a little more light in there um, 24 is fantastic I love it I think that's really cool so I'm a huge fan and I use the uh, the override all the time so this is something that anybody that didn't know what that was I highly suggest you use it on a regular basis now and then you have your LV display and this has something to do with um, photography I believe if anybody knows what this is I was I tried to read up on it I did the whole uh, you know, help part, and I didn't exactly understand 100% what the LV display did. So, again, if I don't know something, I'm not going to sit here and try to explain it to you guys. Uh, if you, anybody knows specifically what the LV display does, uh, feel free to leave me a comment or send me a message. I'm always interested to learn. I am not an expert, per se, in uh, photography. I'm learning. Uh, really, most people aren't experts. We're all just learning uh, regular, you know, every day, just trying to get more knowledge in our head and, uh, and move forward in our careers.